Okay, well, uh, as Ali said, we are going to talk about uh, how organize uh, scientific publications, particularly mathematical publications, because uh, we work with a group of mathematicians. Uh, we have around 100 uh, mathematicians in the place we work, and they work in different areas like computational geometry, uh, data analysis, probability, algebra, etc. So, well, so, so somebody might wonder what the what a mathematician do. So, basically, they work on open problems. For example, uh, this is a very nice problem, the Aragari problem, which says that uh, how many what is the minimum number of words who together can observe the wall gallery? For, ex for example, let's say a gallery is this room. So how, how many uh, words you need to, to have all this space uh, under custody? So th this problem is very old. So the, the answer, if you're wondering, is you need n uh, between three where in n is the number of corners in the gallery. So, so they solve problems like this. They modify it a little. For example, if you have a, now you worry it's have superpowers and he can see it through walls, through one wall, through two walls, how many is the ones you need. So okay, when they have the result, when they solve that, they write a paper uh, with the answer. And basically they use what is called LaTeX. That is a format, uh, it's a standard language for writing papers, scientific papers. And this is a document preparation system for high quality typesetting, right? So they submit this, their work to journals. Uh, the journal assigns some people to review those papers. And then if the result is correct, they make a publication with the, the result. Uh, this takes to a site, uh, a reference to this publication with each in a format called BibTeX. BibTeX is, uh, is basically a bibliographic reference. Well, it's to manage bibliographic reference uh, provides flexible flexible solutions to the problem of automatically generating bibliography lists uh, and in different styles. This this language was uh, developed in 1985, so before the web, or before the web was e very used, and it was mainly for printed journals. Uh, but the the good the sign of this thing is that uh, a BibTeX database is basically a text file with a lot of entries in there. Uh, and basically, it's a keyword value pair, everything of this. So, so we have some types, so some types, sorry, like an article. It could be a book. It could be a, a setting. Uh, different types we have here. And every item has an identifier and a pair of keyword values, like authors, the number of the authors, the title, the title of the publication, etc. Right? <clears throat> so this is very important because we, when somebody work make reference to work of other people. So we have lists like those. And depending on the journal that is publishing this, is the format we, they present this. So that, that's why BibTeX was very, very, very important. So the problem we face now is, now that the internet is very, well, it's everywhere, how a, a, mathematici a mathematician, for example, can show all their publications so other people can find the work. Uh, students, let's say, if we live in Mexico, how the students from other countries can find what the mathematicians in Mexico are doing and decide if they go to work with them. That's a, a, a problem, for example. 
there are s some uh, sites uh, that collect those information, those BIPTEC uh, reference, but unfortunately those sites are, uh, are closed. You have to pay a subscriptions to have access to those things. Uh, but if your university pay for that, you, can, you have access to uh, all the bibliographies that are in there. You can export that to BibTeX and, and make some searches in, inside. There are many of those. Uh, this, this is one we use m much because it's only about mathematics. It's called MathSignet. There's another one more generic called Web of Science. Uh, the, the difference with this is that in the MathSignet, every author has an ID. So, so we can identify exactly what are the publications of one person. Uh, that's not the case in, in that side web of science. You just search for a name of the name of a person and it can send results of all or people that has a similar name. So it's not easy to find what's the real work of that person. Another one this is this one, Scopus, is the same. There's no identifier, or at least in here you can have, you can have an identifier, but if the person who publish uh, those articles don't uh, assign an ID, this thing is the same as Web of Science. Uh, then we have a Google Scholar which has, uh, which I think is better than the others in some ways uh, because you have an ID, but we have the problem that not everybody likes Google, not everybody wants to have an account there. Uh, even though if everybody of the mathematicians uh, had a, uh, an account here, we have the problem that if we want to find how many publications are of some group, the group of uh, category theory, algebra, or, or anything else, we can find how many publications the group has. We have to go one by one. So, so that's much work. Uh, so, <clears throat> so <laughs> what this has to be with Plon? Uh, so, so we have to talk a, a little about the history of plon and bibliographies. Uh, there was in plon, f in plon three, plon, plon four, there was a, co a product called Product CMF Bibliography, which addressed this problem. Uh, at least you can upload your bibli bibliography in plon very easily. Uh, I think it, it does a good job back then. Uh, the problem with this is that, as the site said, it only works with Plum 3, Plum 4. I, I really don't know if this works with Plum 5 in the early versions, but it's implemented in archetypes. So we, we cannot use it anymore. And we know that Plum 5.2 is going to take archetypes out of it. So we need to to move on and search for other things. Um, another thing that goes with Plon is collective citation styles, which uh, complements bibliography with the styles. Bibliography is just to upload the data in Plon, and the, the, the then part, the style part, is uh, done by this product. Unfortunately, there is, there, there never released a, a version, I think. I, I think it, it was developed by Jascarta, right? <coughs> but they stay in an alpha version. <laughs> that's, that's bad. That's, uh, and also it's for the same FA bibliography, which is an archetype. Uh, when we start working with Plon, we, we face with a problem um, a more general problem that was to create a curriculum vitae. A curriculum has many of the items that a bibliography has, like articles, uh, proceedings, and those things. So, 
and, and and even more things like how many courses this person has given, how many conference has given. And well, we implement something based on CMF bibliography that resolves these things. We have, for example, uh, the same functionality in terms for articles. We can exp exp import from BibTeX and export for, from BibTeX. We search in, in those engines that publish bibliographies and upload to the user so they can choose if they want to add this to, to their collection of publications or they already have it and they don't want, to, they don't want it. Uh, the bad thing with this is that it's also, we implemented also an archetype back then. And, but since then we have been working with more things related with bibliographies like like, get it, like retrieving big victim files from different sources. We develop a small script called Bib Scrapper with the idea of a, a perilous, there were a, a perilous scrapper that used MatSignet to download those big files. So we de develop this, uh, this is a script in Python where we can give the number of, the ID of the person we need the publications or a list of, pub, or a list of IDs and the year of the publications. If we only want the, the publication of 1980, we, we do it like this. Or if we omit this, we can get all the, public, all the bibliography from that source. Uh, this, this is done only for MatSignet because there is where we have IDs for every person. Uh, other thing we have done is uh, retrieve bibliography from different sources, MatSignet, Google, Scholar, uh, and instead of store that information in Plon, just have the bibliography database, database in a file and show different results, for example, you, we want to know uh, the publications from 1978 to, 19, to 2018, only in this range, so, you can, so this thing can tell you, or uh, for one person or a group of person, or people, pardon, sorry. Uh, so while we have been in touch with bibliographies a little, and, but what about bibliographies in Plon 5? We definitely need to do something with this. Uh, and we are being working on something. It's, it, it's just a proof of concept with that we have. Uh, we, we find this package called BibTech Parser, which reads uh, a BibTeX uh, database, it can write, uh, if, if you have content in Python, uh, a dictionary in Python, it can write it in format, in BibTeX uh, format. Uh, it works with Python 2 and Python 3. I think this has very good documentation, so we can use that package for the BibTeX thing. Obviously, we need to move to dexterity, all those content has moved to dexterity. And of course, for the styling thing, use what Yaskarta was using, citation styles. I think it's the most generic. There are many styles here. And there's also a JavaScript thing that if you give it to an JSON thing, you give it, you, you transform the BibTeX to JSON and this thing showed in the way you want. So, so, so that's the path we're following. The idea is that BibTeX is well defined. We have things like articles, book, in book, collections, etc. Almost 13 types. And every type has required fields, like the article has authors, title, journal, years, volume, and yeah. And uh, optional fields, for example, number, pages, month. Uh, the thing is that every we no, no, no one has the same of the other. There's always a difference in one or two five or two fields. Uh, so what we're thinking is that we can implement the 
this is a, a, this one, for example, as a content type with these fields and the optional fields like uh, behavior and dexterity or something like that. So we can plug more uh, of those attributes in there. Uh, and well, this is, as I told you, a, a work in progress. We we have the idea, we want to migrate that package of bibliography to Plum 5 and then extend that, that to our needs for a CV, a more uh, more generic idea. So if you have feedback that we can use to make these implementations, it will be great. Uh, we, we just have the idea, we have, we have made uh, some proof of concepts, I think it it's going to work, but if you have feedback, it will be welcome. Um, that's. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Does anyone have questions? Or? Actually, I can. Is there another mic up there? Yeah. I can just. Hello? Okay. I can just speak to why uh, citation styles that add-on didn't really go any further. We at Jez Carta have a couple of clients who are heavy into bibliographies, and um, we wound up viewing the CMF bibliography route of having full bibliographic information in Plon to be somewhat of a dead end, because so many of our clients are using this thing called Zotero. Are you familiar with, you guys familiar with Zotero? Mm, yeah. So, um, uh, the new approach that we're thinking of migrate in so, so yes we're needing to upgrade all these sites and we need to do something about the bibliographies uh, for the short term we'll probably we'll probably um, upgrade CM I'm, by the way my talk is going to be really short it's going to be the next one so I think it's okay to go a little bit over on this um, so we're um, we're probably going to upgrade CMF bibliography to work on Plon five for a very short term solution and just will have to be on Python 2.7 for a little while. But for the long term, we're thinking of moving to a model where the bibliographic information is stored in Zotero and it's managed in Zotero because so many academics use Zotero, but not mathematicians who use BibTeX, but all the other guys <laughs> seem to use Zotero. Uh, and then you can, Zotero has an API, so you can display that information in Plone, uh, but manage it in Zotero. So that's the new thing that we're thinking of doing, which is why we haven't done much else with citation styles. Anyway. Okay. Thank you. Um, other people have questions or want to talk about what they're doing? Is, do other people support people with mathematical formulas and they have to use BibTeX and LaTeX and all that stuff? Because that's a, like a niche that doesn't seem to use Zotero. Is that true? Can you speak to that? Do your do your academics not use Zotero? No, they, they, they don't. No, they uh, they basically use uh, Plon. What we have in, what we have developed in Plon. Yeah. 